In this video, we will show you how to use the tools for managing static upper and lower jaw scan relations, or bytes, in dental system. You will learn how to use AI Byte tool to obtain a byte in cases where the case has either been received without a byte registration, or there is reason to suspect that the byte registration is not correct. How to import additional byte scans into a case, and how to align the upper and lower jaws to them. How the broader virtual articulator, toolkit and settings can be used to change the upper and lower jaw relations and how to switch between multiple bytes during the design process. How to import and use Faithbo registrations or jaw motion recordings is not included in this video. Virtual Articulator has become a consolidated place for byte management tools in Dental Designer. In Dental System 2024, the Virtual Byte Aligner tool was introduced, making it possible to incorporate new byte scans into a case and dynamically work with multiple byte registrations. The updates in the Virtual Articulator also meant that fixed prosthetic workflows, the Align to Byte substep, was removed from the Prepare step into the Virtual Articulator. However, in the removable prosthetic workflows, it still exists. The Virtual Byte Aligner can be accessed through the Virtual Articulator in Dental Designer by selecting the Modify Alignment of Jaw section, followed by Align to Byte. You can also access it through the Occlusal Alignment substep of the Prepare step by selecting the Virtual Articulator Byte Aligner. The Virtual Articulator Byte Aligner window opens, showing the upper and lower jaw scans in separate windows. Any byte scans that may have arrived with the case into Dental Designer can be found in the Byte Scan drop-down menu. For instance, TRIOS cases with full arch scans usually contain a left and or right side buckle byte scans, in addition to the default byte based on an algorithm. Next, we will go through how additional byte scans can be imported into an existing case in order to be used in the Virtual Byte Aligner tool. Additional byte scans can be brought into a case through the order form in Dental Manager or in Dental Designer via the Additional Scans tool. The byte scans can be imported at any stage of the workflow where the additional scans tool is available. In this example, importing takes place in the anatomy design step. The import of byte scans takes place in the load tab of additional scans tool. Simply select load and use the browser to locate and upload the scans. You can also rename the byte scans for easier identification at this stage or delete them if needed. Once the new byte scan or scans have been imported, it is time to use them to establish a new relative position of the upper and lower jaws using the virtual byte aligner. We will start by selecting a byte scan from the byte scan drop down menu. In addition to any bytes included in the case, the menu contains all additional scans imported into the case. Now select the byte scan you wish to use for alignment. The selected byte scan should appear in the middle window. The scans in the windows can be rotated and moved individually, and the color and texture, as well as material shaders, can be toggled on or off. The Virtual Articulator Byte Aligner features a small workflow, prompting the user to first align the upper jaw to the byte scan. It is recommended to start by orienting both the upper jaw scan and the byte scan in the same position in their own windows for easier identification of areas critical for correct alignment. Once both the jaw scan and the byte scan windows have the same view, it is possible to either use the three-point alignment or selection alignment tool to align the scans. When using three-point alignment, select three corresponding and reliable points on both scans. When satisfied with the location of the points, select Align. When using the Selection Alignment tool, in some cases, you can simply select Align and the alignment happens automatically. If this does not produce the desired outcome, you have the option to paint select areas by holding down the left mouse button. The diameter of the tool can be changed by holding down control and rotating the mouse scroll wheel. 
Make sure to select only areas that are present in both the bite and jaw scans when using the selection tool as it is likely to not provide a satisfactory result if the areas selected do not match both scans. If undesired areas have been selected, the selection can only be cleared and started again. Once the alignment has been done, you can inspect the result by turning on the difference map tool in the middle window. The colors not similar to the scan shade indicate areas where the scans are not in contact with one another. A successful alignment should have a dominance of gray or the scan color in the areas where there is no or very little distance between the overlaid scans. Small local differences can be present in areas of soft tissue or moisture captured in the scans, for example. A non-successful alignment will have large areas of yellow, red or blue color in areas that should be geometrically similar in both reference scans. The colors indicate the distance between the jaw and bite scans. Once the upper jaw alignment is done, you will be prompted to align the lower jaw to the bite scan. When you are satisfied with the upper jaw result, you can proceed to align the lower jaw. The tools available are the same as described before. When aligning the lower jaw, pay particular attention to only selecting lower jaw areas and avoid areas with missing scan data on the bite scan as alignment references. If you are not satisfied with the result of the alignment, you can select Reset and try again. If you are happy with the alignment results, select OK and the window closes. This will create and save a new bite scan in the case. If you are about to align a negative scan surface, such as an impression to a positive surface model, like in this example of a scan try indentures with a new bite registration, make sure to enable the swap normal setting when uploading it with the additional scans tool. This will make sure the software is able to align the surfaces later in the Virtual Byte Aligner. Note that the Virtual Byte Aligner window can be maximized and the size of the windows adjusted. Make sure to keep track of which areas on the try indentures have been altered by the clinician, shortened flanges, pressure points, undercuts, etc., and avoid those when selecting the alignment areas. The new jaw relation will now be available in the Select Static Occlusion drop-down menu. The list contains a default bite, which is the original bite for the case. Any new and saved jaw positions from Bite Aligner will appear as a bite with a numerical extension. Any time during the design workflow, if there is a need to switch between saved static occlusions, the bite can be selected from the Static Occlusion menu and you can observe the scans adjusting to the new bite. In fixed prosthetic cases, the design will stay in relative position of the jaw it is done on and will move in the new bite relation according to the scan movement. In removable prosthetics cases, the artificial teeth will remain in the designed occlusion as the relative position of the lower jaw is adjusted according to the new registration. If needed, the teeth arrangement can be adjusted manually. Dental System 2025 introduced an artificial intelligence-based functionality that can help define a bite in cases where the upper and lower scans have been received in Dental System. For instance, without a bite registration, or there is reason to suspect that the bite registration is not correct. For AI bite to work, both upper and lower jaw scans need to have 10 or more natural teeth, which rules out quadrant or small segment scans. AI Byte will also not work with cases or orders with removable prosthetic work types. Also, it is recommended to trim retromolar pads and tuberosities that cause the upper and lower jaw scans to intersect away from the scans as they may affect the result. AI Byte functionality is located in the Virtual Byte Aligner tool in the Virtual Articulator. It can be accessed by opening the Virtual Articulator, selecting the Modify Alignment of JAWS tool, followed by Align to Byte. You can also open it through the Occlusal Alignment sub-step of the Prepare step in Dental System. To use AI Byte, simply select Align with AI. If AI Byte is not available for the scan setting question, 
a line with AI button is disabled, accompanied with a text explaining the reason why. You can inspect the AI byte by using the distance map tool in the middle window. Contact areas are marked with a red circumference and contact proximity is displayed in colors. You can also toggle the scan color off for better visibility. The AI byte can be approved and saved by selecting OK. If you are not satisfied with the AI byte, you can simply return to the original registered byte by selecting Cancel. The new jaw relation will now be available in the Select Static Occlusion drop-down menu. The list contains a default byte, which is the original byte for the case. Any new and saved jaw positions from the virtual byte aligner will appear as a byte with a numerical extension. The vertical opening tool allows you to increase or decrease the distance between the upper and lower jaw scans. It is very important to understand that this tool does not open or close the bite by simulating human jaw motion like an articulator does. The opening is purely vertical. If you wish to save the new jaw position based on vertical opening, simply select Lock Current Jaw Position. The position will be saved in the Static Occlusion menu. It will be named Custom with a running number. Note, the virtual articulator incisal pin can be used for increasing or decreasing the vertical dimension similarly to a physical articulator, which we will cover later in the video. Optimize occlusion function was originally developed to remove intersections between upper and lower scans, especially in iOS cases in order to be able to design restorations and produce working models with passive contact points. Optimize occlusion minimizes intersections between jaw scans, but it also seeks to maximize contact points. When using the tool, it is good to be aware of the following behavior. The tool works best with full arch scans with multiple contact points spread across the arches, but it can also be used for quadrants. Scans with free endings and limited contact points are prone to getting tilted as the software tries to establish contacts. All scan data collisions are recognized as potential contacts. This is why it is recommended to always trim retromolar pads and or tuberosities from the scan if they are colliding with the opposing scan. If you prefer to have the registered jaw relation despite the intersections reflected in the working models in Model Builder in the Adjust Occlusion Steps Occlusion Adjustment Toolkit, it is possible to cut the intersections between the upper and lower scans. Simply enable Grind Premature Contacts option and select Next. This will change the occlusal surface anatomy in the models in the intersecting areas, but keeps the original vertical dimension hence enabling to have the same byte height represented in the physical working models as the restorative design process. It is possible to individually manipulate the positions of the upper and lower scans fully manually. Each of the scans is equipped with a set of control arrows. Start by left-clicking on the scan you would like to move. The blue arrows move the jaw up or down and side to side. Red arrows control the rotation of the scan. The direction you can control with the arrows depends on the view direction of the model. When moving the jaw, it is good to remember that the scans are able to go through each other. If unintended changes to the jaw positions are made, simply select either the articulator or settings icon to undo the changes and return to the previous tab. When satisfied with the positioning, you can save the new byte by selecting the Lock Current Alignment of the Jaws button. This will create a new byte in the Static Occlusion menu under the name Custom with a running number. To adjust vertical dimension with the help of a virtual articulator, in the Virtual Articulator Setup tab, the incisal pin opening value can be used for managing the vertical dimension. First, make sure the jaws are positioned correctly in the articulator by dragging the control arrows and the occlusal plane. You can also change the articulator type if needed. 
the vertical dimension can be changed by adjusting the opening of the incisal pin value according to the treatment plan. Do note that the upper and lower jaw scans are able to intersect when the incisal pin opening is adjusted. Before saving, you can reverse changes made with the opening value by inserting the original opening value, in this case, zero. Once satisfied with the result, you can save the new vertical dimension by selecting Lock Current Alignment of the Jaws. Any bytes changed and edited through the Virtual Articulator Setup tab will show in the Select Static Occlusion menu under the name State with a running number. It is good to note that the changed jaw positions are not automatically saved, which means that if you exit the section of the Virtual Articulator without saving the bytes, the changes will be lost. When saved, new bytes are added to the byte menu. If you wish to return to the original byte registration, you can select default from the drop-down menu. All saved bytes are located in the byte drop-down menu. Bytes can be named for easier identification by first selecting the byte, followed by the icon on the right to the drop-down menu. In the Edit Occlusion Properties window, after typing in the new name, either save it or cancel. You can also delete a saved byte registration by selecting Delete. Any time during the design workflow, if there is a need to switch between saved static occlusions, the byte can be selected from the Static Occlusion menu. In this video, we demonstrated how to manage static upper and lower jaw scan relations in dental system. You saw how to use the AI Byte tool to generate a byte when a registration is missing or potentially inaccurate. We also covered how to import and align additional byte scans and explored the Virtual Articulator Toolkit to adjust jaw relations.